While the films were for the most part faithful to the books, there were some differences in the appearance of the actors versus the way their characters was described in the books. So here in today's video, we're gonna see what the Harry Potter cast should have looked like if their appearances really reflected the books. Starting first with Harry Potter, everyone's favorite hero is described often throughout the books, with his primary introduction in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone giving the most information. Harry had always been small and skinny for his age. Harry had a thin face, black hair, and bright green eyes. He wore round glasses held together with a lot of scotch tape. The only thing Harry liked about his own appearance was a very thin scar on his forehead that was shaped like a bolt of lightning. The movie Harry has the dark hair described in the books, and for the most part, he wears it in the same style. However, in Deathly Hallows, J.K. Rowling notes that his hair had grown to shoulder length due to his time for searching for Horcruxes, something that didn't happen in the films. The other obvious difference between book Harry and film Harry is the blue eyes, which don't match Harry's green ones in the book. Ron Weasley Ron's red hair was delivered on points in the film. Outside of his hair, Ron is also described after his introduction in the Philosopher's Stone as being tall, thin, and gangling with freckles, big hands and feet, and a long nose. The movie Ron is practically freckle-free, a non-word added via makeup or special effects. He also isn't that tall. The actor is only 1.72 meters, which is below average. Rowling also notes that Ron has blue eyes compared to the brown ones. Voldemort. Rowling writes in the Goblet of Fire that Voldemort is tall and thin, with a face whiter than a skull, with wide, livid, scarlet eyes and a nose that was as flat as a snake's. Everything was on point in the movie, however, for some reason, the film decided not to go with scarlet eyes for Voldemort, instead going with the actor natural blue eyes. Young Tom Riddle in the movies is also similar to Riddle in the books. The character is described in the Chamber of Secrets as being handsome teen, with jet black hair and dark dark eyes, which works with the version of the character in the films. Bellatrix Lestrange Rowling describes Voldemort's loyal follower Bellatrix as having long black hair, with dark, heavy, lidded eyes, and an air of arrogance. Rowling notes that Bellatrix was very beautiful before her imprisonment at Azkaban and that she developed a skinnier appearance afterwards. The movie Bellatrix wild hair, as book Bellatrix was not a feature in the books. However, it helped sell the craziness of the character and wasn't out of place with her personality. Movie Bellatrix also wasn't as skinny as book Bellatrix was described, although she did sell the air of arrogance perfectly. Dumbledore In the Philosopher's Stone, Rowling describes Dumbledore as a tall, thin, and very old, judging by the silver his hair and beard, which were both long enough to tuck into his belt. His blue eyes were light, bright, and sprinkling behind health moon glasses, and his nose was very long, as though it had been broken at least twice. Two actors took on the role of Dumbledore and both looked pretty close to the headmaster's description in the book. Richard Harris, who played Dumbledore in the Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets before his death, had hair that was more white than silver, and his eyes were a darker blue. Other than that, however, his betrayal was pretty spot on. Michael Gambon, who took over the role in Prisoner of Azkaban, had a beard that was probably a few inches too short to be tucked into his belt, and his eyes were brown instead of blue. Still, both he and Harris did the character justice. Severus Snape In the book, Snape is described as having a greasy black hair, a hooked nose, and sallow skin, which is pretty close to Alan Rickman's look in the films, although his nose was a bit on straight side. One key difference is his age. As revealed in the Half-Blood Prince, Snape was born in 1960, which would make him 31 when Harry first started at Hogwarts. Rickman was 55 when the first Harry Potter film was released. We can also see that Snape's height might not be right. Rowling notes that Snape is shorter than Sirius, which doesn't fit, as Alan Rickman was taller than Gary Old Man. Hagrid In the Philosopher's Stone, Rowling describes Hogwarts groundskeeper Hagrid as almost twice as tall as a normal man and at least five times as wide. He looked simply too big to be allowed and so wide, long, bushy black hair and beard hid most of his face. Movie Hagrid's hair and beard fit well with his description, but although the actor is towering, he doesn't reach Hagrid's supernatural size. The half-giant is described as being 3.5 meters, while the movie Hagrid is only 1.85 meters. Although he became much taller with the help of some movie magic, he still didn't ever quite seem as large as Hagrid was intended to be. 
The Dursleys. The Dursleys, for the most part, fit with their book descriptions, with 1k deference. Petunia and Dudley are both blonde. Mr. Dursley is described in the Philosopher's Stone as a big beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large mustache, which fit with the movie Vernon portrayal. Petunia is thin and blonde and had twice the usual amount of neck, which works well with the movie Petunia, aside from her dark brown hair. Dudley was described as having a large pink face, not much neck, small watery blue eyes, and thick blonde hair that lay smoothly on his thick fat head. All of this fit with movie Dudley, again aside from his brown hair. Hermione Granger Emma Watson started out as a pretty accurate portrayal of the version of Hermione. The character was described in the Philosopher's Stone as having a boozy sort of voice, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth, which for the most part fit with Emma Watson. However, in the later films, the two started to diverge more, as movie Hermione grew up to be model level gorgeous, and book Hermione remained, for the most part, a more confident version of her bushy haired, large toothed self. Although the books did include some of this transformation, Rowling notes in the Goblet of Fire that Hermione had done something with her hair. It was no longer bushy, but sleek and shiny. The reduction in the size of her front teeth was more noticeable than ever. Emma Watson is probably more gorgeous than Hermione was ever intended to be. Luna Lovegood Luna is described in the Order of Phoenix as a dirty blonde with straggly waist-length hair and a very pale eyebrows and bright eyes that give her a permanent surprise look. Her eyes are later said to be grey. Movie Luna has light blue eyes, not grey, and her hair in the films were closer to platinum blonde than dirty blonde. However, the actress' brilliantly loopy portrayal of the character more than made up for any small differences in the appearance. Ginny Weasley Rooney described Ginny as having bright brown eyes, with flaming red hair, worn as a long mane, which is mostly fitting with the actress, except the eyes, which were green-blue. Another difference lies in the similarities between the Weasley siblings. While movie Ginny had no resemblance to her movie siblings, past their shocking red hair, the books say Ginny is supposed to look a lot more like her brothers. Draco Malfoy The Malfoy's pale blonde hair is well outlined in the books and fit well with the way the evil family is portrayed in the films. Draco specifically is described as having a pale pointed face. During his introduction in the Philosopher's Stone, Rowling also notes that Draco has grey eyes. Tom Felton, like most of the Harry Potter actors, has an eye color that doesn't match his characters, as his eyes are blue compared to Draco's grey. However, he played the Malfoy platinum hair and the character's signature sneer perfectly throughout the films. I hope that was enough for today's video. If you have any suggestions, please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.